Is it better to have Fintan? Fintan wants to know, is it better to have a high dB, low axial ratio or low dB, high axial ratio in an omni antenna for cinematic long range analog? Um, Fintan, why are you compromising and accepting a low axial ratio? Why wouldn't you buy a good antenna that has a high axial ratio? Well, uh, that has a good axial ratio and that has the gain that you want. Why would you buy an antenna with a bad axial ratio? Right? Uh, the answer to that question is very, very difficult to answer. Um, you know, a cross polarized antenna could have something like 15 dB of loss. So there's a theoretical antenna out there. Well, that's if it's perfectly cross polarized. What if it's linear? Like the worst case for a circular polarized antenna would be if it was linear. And that would give you about 3 dB of loss. So I guess I would take the low axial ratio high gain antenna. Because the low axial ratio, like there's no way that the antenna that they sell as right hand polarized is accidentally going to be left hand polarized. Okay, You're, if you have a, a right hand polarized and a left hand polarized antenna and they're, they both have a perfect axial ratio, the, the number that I have in my head is that's about 15 dB of loss. I don't know if that's 100% accurate. If Alex Grieve comes out of the woodwork to tell me I'm wrong, I defer. Um, but there's no way that a, a right-hand polarized antenna is going to actually be left-hand polarized unless somebody just mislabeled it. So what we see happen is an antenna is either poorly designed or poorly manufactured so that instead of having a perfect axial ratio and being like 100% right-hand polarized, instead the axial ratio is lower and it's closer to a linear antenna. So it's less than 100% right-hand polarized. And then as you get down to 0% polarization, you're a linear antenna. And then as you go the other direction, you become a left-hand polarized antenna. When you have a perfectly circular polarized antenna paired with a perfectly linear polarized antenna, that's about 3 dB of loss, not actually that much. So I think your worst case scenario when buying an antenna with a lower axial ratio is that it will be as much as 3 dB of loss. And therefore, I think it's easier for you to make up 3 dB of loss by having a little bit higher gain antenna than it is to make up the lower gain of the antenna by having a perfect axial ratio. That's what I would say. There's no bad axial ratio, is there? Asks Slaughterbart Fast. Yeah, I mean, if you, what you would ideally like is a perfect axial ratio on all your antennas, and then they're all left hand polarized or they're all right hand polarized. If, if an antenna has a, has a lower axial ratio, it is less than perfectly circular. Cir circular polarization is not either or, it's a spectrum. So you can be 0% circular polarized, in which case you're 100% linear polarized, or you could be 100% circular polarized, in which case you're 0% linear, or you could be anywhere between those two. And what you want with a circular polarized antenna usually is the, 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 the perfect, like one, I think it's 1.0 is the perfect axial ratio. And that means it's, it's the ratio of circular to linear, isn't it? I think it is. So if your axial ratio is less than 1.0, it means the antenna could be getting a better, uh, better polarization match. Um, but in reality, it often isn't.